Juniper emulation using VirtualBox. Let's begin. One of the secrets of really mastering a technology is to first start learning about it and then to help reinforce and master that learning by doing some hands-on practice. And ever since Scott Morris has been creating some really amazing Juniper courses for us at CBT Nuggets, I've had a lot more requests for people asking, hey, how do we emulate a Juniper environment so we can practice hands-on without having to have a physical rack of equipment? Our objective in this micro nugget is really simple. I want to walk you through how you can set up a virtualized environment. And there are several different ways of accomplishing this. I'm going to share with you one of those ways right now. The ingredients list, what we need to do to pull this off is we need VirtualBox, which is from Oracle. So you'd want to have installed that, have it on your host computer. It's going to act as our hypervisor for some virtual machines. And in VirtualBox, we can create what are known as host only adapters or host only interfaces. And I think it installs one of those by default on the host computer. And if you want, you can install several host only interfaces. So if a person wanted to create three or four different subnets within the VirtualBox environment without using GNS3 or any other front end, you could do it just by simply adding additional virtual interfaces inside of VirtualBox. The other thing that you'll want to get is this file right there, the juneos12.ova file. And the reason you'd want this file is that this is the easiest, bar none, the easiest and fastest way to get Juniper emulation up and running in VirtualBox. So if you want the fastest and simplest way to do it, I do a Google search for that file. And that combined with VirtualBox are all the tools you're gonna need to set up a virtual environment with Juniper. So in VirtualBox, let's take a look at the version that we're currently running. And I've actually got this running on several different versions of VirtualBox, but at the moment I'm running version 4.3.6. R91406. And if you have a more current version, it's also very likely to work. Also, my host operating system is version 8.1 of Windows. So in VirtualBox, if you go to File and down to Preferences and then down to Network, this is where you can specify your host only networks. And by default, I think it installs one. And if you wanted to create four or five virtual networks in VirtualBox, you can simply click on the plus symbol here and add more virtual adapters, then reboot. And then when you start VirtualBox, you'd have more virtual adapters, which we can use as virtual networks to play with in VirtualBox. So let's create our first virtualized Juniper box. We'll go to File. We'll say Import Appliance. And then we'll simply browse to the location of the juneos12.ova file. I happen to have mine right here in a temp folder. You'll notice it's 275,874 kilobytes, which is just over 275 megabytes in size. And the reason I show you that file size is if you want to replicate this and you get this file, you want to make sure it's approximately that same size. So I'm going to select that, click on Next. And if you want to change any of the details here, here's how to do it. You simply highlight it, and then you simply select the value you'd like to have. So if you want to change the name, you can change that right here. If you want to change the number of interfaces it's going to use, you can change that right here. Simply deselect the interfaces you don't want to use. I'm going to go ahead and use these defaults. I am, however, going to tell the system I want to reinitialize the MAC addresses of each network card. And that's so if I have two or three or four of them that I bring in, and if they are on the same subnet together, I don't want to have two different machines with the same identical MAC address, because that will cause a problem if those two interfaces are on the same network segment. So I'll click on Import, and that is done. Now to take a look at the details of this, we can either highlight it and click on Settings, or right-click and go to Settings from the drop-down menu. And I'd like to go to Network, and I'm going to say that the network interface number one, that it's enabled. I want to say that it's attached to a host-only adapter, and I'm going to select my first host-only interface. So if we have two virtual machines, two Juniper routers, and we connect both of those to the same subnet or to the same network, then they can talk to each other. I'm also going to go under Advanced, and I'm going to say regarding promiscuous mode, I want to go ahead and allow all. And I'm also going to say that the cable is connected. And click on OK. Now to bring in our second machine, we could do that exact same process. Or we could highlight this one here, right click, and say that we want to clone this device. And I'm going to go ahead and call this R2. I do want to reinitialize the MAC address of all network cards. And we'll click on Next. And I'm going to create a full clone, not a linked clone. So it's going to be a standalone additional virtual machine when we're done. Now on this clone, I'm also going to tweak one other parameter. I'm going to go to settings and under serial ports, because it brought this information in from the original machine, I don't want to have two machines with the same exact file path for the serial interface on that device. So I'm simply going to change this. I'm going to change that to R2 instead of R1 and click on OK. I'm also going to go to settings just to verify that under network, 
that the first adapter is enabled, that the cable is connected, and just for grins, let's go ahead and put in a MAC address here as something very specific. In fact, we'll use 00002222 here. I'll click OK. And on the other one, we'll go to Settings, go to Network, Advanced, and let's use 00001111111 for the MAC address of the R1 Juniper box. And we'll click on OK. That way, when we connect them together, we can actually verify that we're communicating with the other appropriate device. And then we'll simply start these up. So I'll click on Start for R1. Put his console right over there. And I'll go to R2 and start R2 up as well. And we'll move his console a little bit to the right. I've got some messages about keyboard control. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss those. And through the magic of editing, we're not going to have to wait for these to fully boot up. All right, now they've booted. They have a login prompt. The default login on a brand new Juniper box is root and there is no password. So to verify that these two Juniper boxes can talk to each other, let's do some basic configuration with an IP address to test our basic connectivity between the two. So we'll go to a command line interface with the CLI command. Let's do a show interface EM0. Interface EM0 is the first interface on this device. And that's the interface that we associated with the host only virtual network adapter in VirtualBox. So let's get into the configuration with the edit command. We could also have typed in configure to get there. Let's edit interface EM0. Let's set unit zero family INET as opposed to INET six. INET meaning IP version four. And we'll set the address to 10.0.0.1 slash 24. We can do a show just to validate what we put in for our configuration of that interface. Let's go up one level and let's do a set system root authentication, plain text, password, and I'll set something there and that's required for it to go ahead and save the config. So we'll do a commit and quit. And what I've also done is similar treatment on the second virtual machine, except I'm using the IP address of 10.0.0.2 instead of 10.0.0.1. Now, if we try to ping back and forth between these devices, it should work. So that's a ping from 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.0.2. We'll do a control C to stop that. And we'll do a show ARP just to verify the ARP cache. And the ARP cache here on R1 says that to get to 10.0.0.2, the layer three address, that the layer two associated MAC address is the one with a whole bunch of twos in it. And if we did that same command over here, it would reflect that to get to 10.0.0.1, it would use the MAC address with a whole bunch of ones in it. And that's just a quick verification that these two systems are communicating together. And this is an example of how we can set up Juniper emulation with simply using VirtualBox as the hypervisor and the Juno S12 OVA file. Now, one additional step that we could also take is we could take these VirtualBox hosts and plug them into GNS3. And that would give us the ability of using the GNS3 front end to work with these Juniper devices, including making connections and so forth. For the details on how to add a VirtualBox host into GNS3, check out our GNS3 course at CBT Nuggets. And if you're interested in Juniper training, check out Scott Morris's courses regarding Juniper also at CBT Nuggets. I have had a great time and I'm glad you joined me for this micro nugget. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.